Good morning. I want to, first of all, take a moment to thank the members of the NAACP for this invitation to serve as your keynote speaker for our 2021 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. I bring you greetings today from the Board of Governors, the faculty, staff, students, and alumni of the distinguished, unique, an incomparable West Liberty University, where I now serve as its 37th president. First of all, I also want to provide a disclaimer. Over the years, I've attended many MLK breakfasts and celebrations. I've heard speeches, mostly from people who acknowledged that they protested with Dr. King were arrested with Dr. King, marched alongside Dr. Martin Luther King. Well, nowadays, most of those individuals are dead or uh, they are elderly and, and cannot do what I'm attempting to do on this morning. So I want you to know that I was too young to have walked, marched, protested, or been jailed with Dr. King. However, I can say that I've met uh, Mrs. Coretta Scott King, Daddy King, Yolanda Dexter, uh, his sister Christine King Ferris. I uh, actually worked for his niece Alvita King and I was a graduate student with another niece. Uh, so hopefully this gives me some credibility to serve as hopefully a bona fide keynote speaker on today. Ladies and gentlemen, on this occasion of the Dr. Martin Luther King celebration, it is important for us to reflect upon an individual who was focused on a mission and a calling, one who focused on improving the life of others. And how many times, though, have we made excuses for not completing tasks or keeping our word? Every new year, some of us make New Year's resolutions that you cannot keep within a week or within some cases 24 hours after making those resolutions. We promise to lose weight, to exercise, read more, volunteer more, give more, stay in contact more. We put off things thinking that we can accomplish them on tomorrow. Sure, I'm going to go back to school and get that advanced degree. I'm going to start my own business. Uh, but this is the, the season now, uh, maybe to build your bank account. Uh, I'm going to dedicate more time to the family, to the church, to my sorority, to my community. We make these promises. We make these vows, these commitments, but we fail to follow through with what we set out to do. We continue to put off what needs to be done today for tomorrow. We make the excuse that we get, we'll get around to doing it eventually. We are experts at procrastination. But as Dr. Martin Luther King so eloquently stated, we are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of right now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is a such thing as being too late. But there is no time for apathy or complacency. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. So here we are some decades later, and the proverbial question is still, where do we go from here? Once again, it's an MLK holiday, and we've taken the day off. Uh, been reminded of the, the great dream Dr. King had. We'd watched on television the various shows that focused on his life. This is our annual time for dusting off the King speeches, celebrating for one day, and then returning to a life of complacency, empty gestures, broken promises, fluent rhetoric about what is the value to mankind in making lives better for everyone. Dr. King fought against the triple evils of racism, materialism, and selfishness. He called for us to move forward, to see the urgency in many barriers that separate God's children from living the blessed life of unity. The barriers of poverty, injustice, and prejudice continue to plague this country. And here we are over 50 years later, crying out that the whole structure of America must be changed that America must be reborn as a truly humane, democratic, free, and civilized society. In 1963, Dr. King delivered his I Have a Dream speech, and we all know about the dream he envisioned. 
Yet we pay very little attention to the, force, to the first portion of that speech, which informs us that America has given the Negro people a bad check, which has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in this great vault of opportunity for this nation. You see, the fierce urgency of now is what Dr. King mentioned back in 1963. He spoke of the debt owed to America's people of color because he spoke of the dream. He was focused on economic conditions and, and problems in America, not just segregation and discrimination, but also the fight against poverty. So the fierce urgency of now dates back to 1963, but how long is now? Has the debt to black America, people of color in America, been paid? How has the fight against segregation and discrimination already been won? Has poverty been eradicated? What do we do next? Yes, we've had a black president sitting in the White House. We have millionaires of color who have made it big. We even have little black boys and little black girls going to school with little white boys and little white girls. We, we now have a vice president elect who is not only female, but a person of color. So has the urgency of now ended? Where do we go from there? Well, in 2021, Poverty can disguise itself by hiding behind unemployment lines, housing foreclosures, and even the inability of a young person to afford a college education. COVID-19 has made us realize many things. In addition to the usual ills that we face as a country and as a civilized group of people, this pandemic has affected us in ways unimaginable. If there ever was a time of urgency, that time is now. What about our K-12 educational school systems? Although there have been recent increases in the number of students of color going to college, the number of students graduating continues to be problematic. Young black males are, are being disengaged from the educational arena and learning environments at alarming high rates. By middle school, many have been tossed out and, and, and disengaged from education. And the incidence of violence and discipline problems among black females in the K-12 setting continue to arise. The pandemic has presented challenges with delivering instructional services to students, not just students of color, but those students of a lower socioeconomic status. They are negatively impacted by the pandemic due to a lack of Wi-Fi, uh, technology resources, and, and even parents and caregate, caregivers do not possess the skills of teaching, tutoring, and coaching that is needed in the household. Where do we go from here? Crime among blacks and against blacks still make the headline news. For some time now, we've been validating the value of life through Black Lives Matter and, and All Lives Matter campaigns. And although the issues have risen to levels of great concern, we have a responsibility, an urgent responsibility to change lives for the better. And those who lack the sensitivity to understand the Black Lives Movement, here, here goes my attempt at enlightening you. If my significant other comes to me in obvious pain and asks, do you love me? And the answer I give is, I love everyone. That, that would be truthful, but also hurtful and cruel in the moment. If a colleague comes to me and says, I'm upset because my father just died. You know, a response of everyone's parents die would be truthful, but hurtful and cruel in the moment. So when a friend speaks up in a time of obvious pain and hurt and says black lives matter, a response of, you know, all lives matter would be truthful, but it is hurtful and cruel in the moment. Let's not be cruel or hurtful in this moment. These are times in which our spirits are being tested in many ways. We find ourselves here in 2021 having to validate the value of life.
There is no question that life is a precious gift given to all of us. Therefore, we must take a critical look at how we got here and, and the critical stance for social justice. It is incumbent upon us to ensure that we make our America a better place. How did we, society, how, how did we as society lose sight of the most important gift that we have, which is life? The major contributing factor to this place where we find ourselves is, the, in simplest form, the loss of values. In his 1954 sermon at Detroit Second Baptist Church, Dr. King spoke on the subject of rediscovering lost values. In his sermon, he said that the problem is with man himself and man's soul. We haven't learned how to be just and honest and kind and true and loving. And that is the basis of our problem. That the real problem is that through our scientific genius, we've made the world a neighborhood. But through our moral and spiritual genius, we fail to make this world a brotherhood. And so the real danger confronting civilization today isn't the atomic bomb that we talk about and heard about, but it's the atomic bomb that lies in our hearts and our souls of men capable of exploding into the violence of hate and to the most damaging type of selfishness. That's the atomic bomb that we must fear today. So the problem is with man, within the heart and soul of man. That's our real problem. So somewhere along this journey, we've lost ourselves and lost others if we don't believe that we are our brother's keeper. So during Dr. King's era, he spoke about societal peace and the impact of serving your community. He further addressed the greatness in all of us and how no one individual is above or beneath serving and reaching to help someone else. He said that everyone can be great because everyone can serve. You don't have to have to a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your, your, your subject and verb agree all the time to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. So the, the root of today's issues is buried very deep. And if you know anything about roots, you know that once the tree is gone, after many years, the roots are still there. And that's the most difficult part to extract. So we have some deeply rooted issues in this country that it's going to take an entire community to come together, united, to help solve and move us forward. In today's society, our, our values seem to have been lost. What happened to the unit that we knew as family? Uh, what happened to the basic values of respect, honesty, compassion, the golden rules? Values are not being taught. They're not being practiced. They're not being passed on in a way that would make Dr. King proud. So we have some major issues in this country, my brothers and sisters. Uh, but I, I'll tell you, we've turned away from the lessons that your, your grandparents, your, your, your mother, your, your, your aunt taught us. I remember a time when we were more afraid of disrespecting our parents uh, than getting on us than we were of law enforcement. You know, in our community, that was a time when life enforcement inflicted upon you by your parents were much more terrifying than law enforcement. Because if an adult gave you a directive, an order, you did it and you didn't question that adult. So nowadays, who's rearing whom? Where do we go from here as we look at rebuilding the foundation of family, community? Because we are all in this mess together. Our adult population has often lacked the health care needed for them to lead a productive life. Sometimes it, it appears that we find ourselves moving backwards instead of going forward. So what will our standard of, of living be? for the next three, four, or five years. I have no doubt that the gap between the rich and the poor, the have and the have nots, will continue to widen. And I believe that the political climate will become less and less democratic as corporate dollars flood into the pockets of Wall Street giants and, and other politicians who could care less about societal climate and improving the conditions of everyday people. The road we are currently traveling is a dangerous one, and if we're not careful, it's going to lead us to a dead end. So a voteless people certainly is a hopeless people, but it's not just enough to register folks to vote. We must insist that folks show up and vote.
And I don't believe that Dr. King would sit sil silently by and watch how little regard we have as Americans for life and the well-being of others. So determining where we go from here requires us to no longer be silent. We must call evil for what it is. And as my mother used to say, there is no right way to do wrong. And when we recognize evil and wrongdoing, we have a responsibility to be the town crier and to call, foul, foul, this is not right. We must be the voice for the voiceless. Martin Niemöller was a prominent Protestant, Protestant uh, pastor who emerged as an outspoken public foe uh, during the time of Adolf Hitler and, and racism. And, and he challenged us with these words. First, they came for the communists, and I did not speak out because I wasn't communist. Then they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I didn't speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. No one left to voice an opinion and to speak out for me, for you, for us. So the process of determining where we go from here calls upon us to be active participants and not just bystanders. Nothing happens unless we make a personal commitment to be about our work and, and our agenda of service, our, our commitment to others, not just self, but to others. And it has to start with each of us individually. Dr. King warned about putting off tomorrow what needs to be handled today during his sermon on the Vietnam War. He argued that civil rights and world peace are interwoven and they play an important role in today's problems, but in today's future. So during this time of fierce and, and, and urgent needs, there are those who among us must, who must rise up and be counted. So to rise up and, and make a difference. So like Dr. King, we, we stand on the shoulders of other great Americans who understood the fierce urgency of now and made a difference in this world. They acted in a timely manner by recognizing the importance of right now. Oh, oh, oh yeah, we, we've moved from a, 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 a fierce Madam C.J. Walker, who was the first black millionaire, to an Oprah Winfrey, who has so many millions, she doesn't know what to do with them. As a people, we've moved from Sojourner Truth to Letitia James being the current Attorney General of the state of New York. We move from Coretta Scott King to a Reverend Bernice King. Uh, as people, we've moved from a Frederick Douglass to a Senator-elect Raphael Warnock. From a W.E.B. Du Bois to Cornel West. We move from a Rosa Parks to a Maxine Waters. We, we've moved from a Dr. Charles Drew to a Dr. Ben Carson. From a Hattie McDaniel to a Whoopi Goldberg. From a Lee Elder to a Tiger Woods. We've moved from Diane Carroll to Viola Davis. From a Dorothy Dandridge to a Halle Berry. We, we, we've gone from Ella Fitzgerald to Mary J. Blige. From Ma Rainey to Beyonce. From Moms Mabel to, to Cheryl Underwood. From a Lena Horne to a Leah Hathaway, from Althea Gibson to a Venus and Serena Williams, and, and, and from the first African American to run for president, Shirley Chisholm, to the selection and election of Kamala Harris as not only a female, but a person of color, poised to serve as our next vice president of these United States of America. Oh yes, we've come a long way. We've come a long way only by the grace of God, but there is much still to be accomplished. And we've got to act now. We've got to act now. As, as Dr. King told us, we're faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We're confronted with the fierce urgency of now in this unfolding conundrum, a confusing and difficult problem for us. Procrastination is still the thief of time. Life often leaves us standing bare, naked and dejected with the loss of opportunity. But don't let it be said that we were too late in responding to the agenda of service. So as we leave this celebration on today, we must move past indecisions and procrastination to a place of action. We must find new ways to speak for peace, for justice, for righteousness throughout this country. If we do not act with a spirit of fierce urgency, we shall surely be dragged down the long, dark, and shameful corridor where there's no compassion, there's no love. 
So let us begin now. Now is the time for us to rededicate ourselves to the long and bitter but meaningful struggle for a new society, a new America. This is the calling of the sons of God and, and our brothers like Martin Luther King Jr. as they wait eagerly for our response. Shall we say the odds are too great? Shall we tell them that the struggle is too hard? Will we be given the opportunity to make a difference now, next week, next year, four years from now? We've got to act and do it right now because now is the only place to start. Now is the perfect opportunity. Now is the time for us to get across and get access to making things happen. Now is the time for us to do things we've never done before if we want to go places we've never seen or gone before. So where do we go from here? Simply in one word, forward. We go forward. Now is the time for forward thinking. Forward thinking of purpose of cause, of change, and of action in 2021. So if not this cause, I ask you, then what? If not here, then where? If not now, then when? If not you, then who? Now, my beloved brothers and sisters, is the time to act. Now is the time to move forward. So will you stand and go forward with me to make a difference. Forward is where we need to go from here. Can I count on you to go forward? Thank you.